Hi guys, um, welcome to today's lesson where we are going to create an AWS Aurora MySQL cluster and then sign into that cluster uh, or log into that cluster using the MySQL Workbench, which is a free client. And then we're going to create a couple of tables and query those tables just to make sure that everything's working. So first thing to do on the Amazon console is go to RDS. So if we type in RDS and once on the RDS um, page what we need to do is create a new database which we click create a new database we're going to do a standard create we're going to do an Amazon Aurora we're going to use the MySQL compatibility we'll keep it regional and we'll keep it on the latest version yep so we're going to create a dev test one writer multiple readers and we're going to give the cluster a identifier we're going to call this one music um, leave the default username as admin and then set a password that you won't forget because we'll need this later. So just make sure you keep a note of that password and we'll need that later. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is use the burstable class and then let's create a T2 medium. So it'll be very, very cheap to do, but it'll spin up slightly quicker than if you use the small. Um, don't create a replica again. This is just an example. Okay, this is really important. So the next thing we need to do is create a separate VPC for this instance, which is going to let us publicly log in from MySQL Workbench. So create a new VPC, additional um, configuration. You want to create a new VP, a new DB subnet. That's correct. You want it to be publicly accessible. So make sure you click yes here, um, and this will allow us to log into the to the database once it's created or the cluster once it's created. Let's create a new VPC. Uh, VPC security group and call it something that you're going to remember. So demo security group uh, JC. Um, we won't need that again. It just needs to be unique. Availability zone, pick one. Database port, leave it at the default Default 3306. Password authentication, leave that clicked. Additional configuration we don't need to do. And if we hit create database, that should be us off and running. It'll take a few seconds to jump to the next screen. Just bear with it. Okay, once on the next screen, it'll probably take five to 10 minutes for these statuses to go from creating um, to, to, to available. It'll jump through a couple of other statuses on the way. Don't worry about it, just bear with it. Give it five to 10 minutes. In the meantime, in the description, there's a link to the MySQL Workbench. It's a free tool. Um, it's maintained by Oracle, but it's completely free. If you click the Download Now button, uh, I'm on Mac, so I'll download Mac. If you're on a different operating system, download a different operating system. Um, it works pretty much the same uh, for all, so it's a, a very good one um, to, to demo with. Um, click the download. Um, you have to log in or sign up the Oracle. Again, it's free. I'm just going to type in my passwords here, uh, download the instance, accept all the defaults, and then I'll see you on the other side once the database is created and we have MySQL Workbench installed and ready to go. Okay, and that is the database fully created. As you can see, um, the statuses are now available. Um, as I mentioned before, it does go through a different co a, a couple of different statuses, including like a not um, compatible option, but just bear with it. Keep hitting refresh and eventually they'll both become um, available. So the next thing I'm going to do is start up the uh, MySQL Workbench uh, from MySQL uh, Workbench, uh, which we downloaded uh, in, the, uh, in the interim time. Okay. Once loaded, what we need to do is create a new connection. So if we hit the plus symbol there and you give your connection a name, so I'm just going to call my music. Um, we need the host name, the port number, the root name and the password. OK, so if we go back into um, AWS, uh, once back on the console, let's click on music instance one and you'll see that there is an endpoint name. So let's copy that endpoint name into uh, the MySQL configuration as the host name. Um, that's it, the port is 3306, we left that as the default. The username um, we left as the default on the console, so that's admin. Um, if you lose that username, which happens on the console, click music, and then you'll see your 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 master username is there, so mine is admin. Um, the next thing you need to do is uh, password. So I'm just going to store it in keychain. It's whatever you gave it um, a few minutes ago. So just type that in. Uh, default scheme is fine. Let's test the connection. And you can see that I successfully made the connection with MySQL. Perfect. Let's click OK. Then that's our connection I made. Let's double click our connection. It takes a little second and it opens up a new query window for us. So I'm just going to blow this up big so we can see it. I have on GitHub 
uh, link in the description, put up a script that will create a database and a couple of tables for us. So I'll just run you through the script quickly. It drops the database music if it exists, creates the database called music. It's going to drop two tables if they exist, song and artist. Um, and it creates the artist table that has an ID, the name of the artist and the genre. And you can see there that we're entering the Rolling Stones, Nirvana, Mumford and Sons. Um, and then on song, it has the song ID, the artist ID, which is the primary key from the artist table, the song that that band sings, and then a foreign key uh, is placed on that artist ID. And then inserting into that table, we have two Rolling Stones songs, two Nirvana songs, and one Mumford and Sons song. So the simplest thing to do is just copy that entire script. So take the entire script back into my SQL Workbench and paste. Put your cursor to the top and then click that lightning bolt. And as you can see uh, on the output with a couple of warnings just saying actually the table didn't exist. Um, so, so that's fine, but then it created everything we needed. So perfect. Okay, then what we wanna do is then take another new query. So hit that wee plus symbol on, on the right hand side. Uh, back in, uh, if we go back one in uh, GitHub, and we look at the example queries, you can see I've put a couple of different queries down here. So one first thing we're gonna do is just query that artist table, really important in MySQL that you take that semicolon. So this is just gonna return us all the information um, from the artist table. So again, just hit that lightning bolt. And as you can see, um, we have the Rolling Stones, Nirvana, Mumford and Sons, Rock, Grunge and Pop, and that's coming back from the AWS um, Aurora instance. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that bit. Um, what we'll do for clarity is actually then just take another new tab. So I'm just gonna take another new tab for clarity. Uh, copy and paste then the song query. So this time we're getting all the songs. Make sure you take it from that semicolon. Paste it in, hit the lightning bolt. And you can see then that we have all the songs. Now, the last thing we're going to do, and again, I'm going to take a new query for this, is join those two tables together. So as I mentioned before, you can join the song and the artist um, together on the artist ID in the song to the ID in the artist table. So this is a bit of um, structured query language in our joins. Um, I'm not covering it in this example today. I will do lessons on the language uh, in future on the channel. But for now, let's just paste that in. Um, and essentially what we're doing is we're joining the artist and song table together to find out what artists sing what songs. So we'll just hit the lightning bolt again. And as you can see, we have the two Rolling Stone songs, Start Me Up, Jumping Jack Flash, and they're joining on that artist ID between the two tables. We have the two Nirvana songs, which are Grunge, and we have In Bloom and Heart Shaped Box. And then we have our third song, which is Mumford and Songs, which I've classified as pop, and I will wait. Um, so that's really it for today. It was a very straightforward, quick lesson on AWS Aurora. Uh, the MySQL flavor. Um, as always, I'll put all this information for free on my website, johnnychevers.co.uk. And until next time, thanks very much.